Before we get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself and my passion for the Acura Legend. I spent the first 10 years of my professional career working on Japanese imports as a mechanic. I then went on to spend another decade learning the collision repair and body and paint business. My only purpose here is to share my knowledge of the Acura Legend with the Legend community. I've been driving Legends for the last 20 years and I've learned a lot about them. Videos seem the best way to communicate my knowledge to the general public. These videos do, however, require a great deal of time and effort to put everything together in a clean presentation. The only thing I ask in return is that you subscribe to the channel and you share my videos whenever you feel appropriate. If someone online is asking a specific question and the content is covered in one of my videos, please feel free to share it with them. Also keep in mind, I am not taking any sponsorships and I am not being paid to promote any products, tools, or materials that you see in my videos. I will also never try to sell you something on my YouTube channel. With all that said, let's get into the video that you came here for. Welcome back to another video guys. We are demonstrating this on our 1995 coupe. There are some minor differences between the 91 to 93 coupe and 94 to 95 coupe, mainly to do with the fog light covers that need to be removed on the earlier models. There will be other minor differences between the sedan and the coupe, but I assure you if you watch this video on the coupe, you should be able to figure out everything on the sedan as well. I suggest that you raise the front end of the car off the ground to make things easier. It would also be easier to go ahead and remove the wheels to give you a little more working room for the fender liners. You can either fully remove the fender liners like I did, or at least take loose some of the clips so that they will be loose towards the front. At the very least, you have to remove the two 10mm bolts holding the front edge of the fender liners to the bumper itself. The lower middle portion of the bumper should only have two plastic clips holding it up to the car. You will notice three windows in the bumper. Those windows are for access to 10mm bolts that hold the lower engine cover on. They are not necessary to remove to get the bumper off. It is also not necessary to remove anything from the top of the bumper whatsoever. The Phillips head bolt you see at the top of the middle of the bumper, you leave it in. We are ultimately going to remove the entire rebar and the plastic bumper assembly together when we get to that point. The next order of business is to remove the turn signal lamps from the bumper. This is where you'll have one extra step if you have the 91 to 93. Because of the flush fitting fog light hole cover, you will have one Phillips head screw on each side that you will need to take loose from the bottom of that cover and then it should pop out from around the edges. On a 94 95 model shown here, you do not have to remove the fog light hole cover at all. They left a hole and that's all we need to access the screw that holds the turn signal lamp in. The screw we're looking for through that hole is a standard number two Phillips. I use a tool that looks like this, six inch long screwdriver bit with a small adapter to adapt it to a quarter inch ratchet. It gives me good access and plenty of length to get up to that screw. Here you can see where on the lamp assembly itself you are trying to get that screwdriver bit to go. You'll see there's a white nylon plastic guide that will kind of help you get the screwdriver in the right spot, but sometimes it can still be tricky. I would try to just hold the six inch bit with your fingers so that you can feel when you are actually getting into the grooves of the Phillips head screw. Once you're sure you've backed that screw out all the way, it can still be tricky to get the lamp to pop out of the bumper. This is where it helps to have the fender liner out of the way because you can reach around the back of the bumper and push the inside edge of the lamp out first. Then you can slide the lamp towards the middle of the bumper and it should come right out. Unplug your lamp, remove it, and you're ready for the next step. The last two bolts to remove the bumper from the car are 12 millimeter bolts located behind the lamps that we took out. I want to go ahead and point out a few things just in case you don't fully understand how the bumper comes off. These two bolts are the only bolts that securely fasten your bumper assembly and reinforcement bar to the car. If they become stripped out, you're going to be in trouble. I also want to point out that there is nothing that should screw or bolt together between bumper and fender. It is simply a plastic slide assembly that's on the back of the bumper and a specially shaped bolt that goes into the fender bracket. I'd recommend checking to make sure no one has added any screws or anything that shouldn't be there. I would also check down in this area underneath the headlamp 
make sure your reinforcement bar assembly still has these hooks in their proper shape. This is meant so the bumper will support its own weight. It will stay hung on the car while you take out those last two 12 millimeter bolts. The bumper assembly does have some weight to it. So if these hooks are bent or misshaped, the bumper may fall off, hurt you, or damage the bumper. At this point, it'd be a good idea to double check and make sure you've disconnected any OEM or aftermarket fog lights that might be on the car and no other wiring is still connected. After removing those last two bolts, the bumper should be sagging down slightly, but securely resting on those hooks on the rebar. At this point, I go to either side of the bumper and make sure that it is moving freely in those slides on the fender so that they're not hanging up, and then I will pick the bumper up by the center of the reinforcement bar and pull it up slightly to get it off of the hooks and then straight forward the entire bumper assembly should slide right off. You just learned in five minutes what some people who have been working on Legends for over 20 years still haven't figured out on their own. Bumper don't look bad, but I think I'm with every other Legend owner, like ugh, busted tabs. I truly have no f***ing idea how to put a bumper on. <laughs> it is the most confusing thing to me, or pulling it off. So if you eventually make a video about that, I'll be on board. Because I know some people are like, oh, you gotta remove the bumper lights, and it's over here, and I'm like, I got no idea. So most of my bumpers are just held on by zip ties. Next, I'm going to walk you through a simple modification you can do to help you fine-tune the alignment of the bumper to the headlamps and the fenders. Assuming everything's the same as it was from the factory, there should only be one metal bolt holding the bumper skin to the upper metal support of the bumper right in the middle. All of the rest of the retainers across the top of the bumper are just plastic clips. A better option is to use all metal bolts with nuts on the back side of that upper bumper support. This way you can securely fasten that plastic bumper to that upper support exactly where you want it. The bolts I chose to use for this I robbed from a rear bumper assembly from a Toyota Tacoma. They're a nice flat top flush fitting bolt that looks better than a big hex head sticking up. Also they are a T30 which is better than having the original Phillips head bolt that goes in the middle in my opinion because the T30 is less likely to strip out and you can see how much more adjustability you have as opposed to using the plastic clips. Obviously this requires test fitting the bumper several times to make sure you get those bolts tightened in just the right spot because it's very hard to try and get to those bolts to tighten them with the headlights in the way and the bumper mounted on the car. Next I'm just going to give you some general knowledge on the bumper assembly components. Your reinforcement bar is a composite fiber and it's never going to rust. You don't have to worry about that. But the upper bumper support being kind of a thin piece of metal, I took mine off and coated everything with epoxy after removing some surface rust. And I did want to point out that the four bolts that hold it to that fiber composite piece are a six millimeter hex. Don't try to use an Allen wrench that is slightly too small. These are very difficult bolts to get out. They are most likely rusted. I would try to hit it with some penetrating oil. Make every effort you can not to strip those out. If they strip out, it's going to be very hard to access the edge of it with a pair of pliers because of the location so be very careful with those. Be very careful with your slide mounts. These are a piece that you cannot buy from the dealer anymore and nobody makes them aftermarket. Remove the two screws from the top and when you pull them off they may come off with the metal retainer or the metal retainer may stay on the bumper. Either way you want to make sure that metal tabs installed to the tab on the bumper and then pop the plastic slide piece back onto it. Also Take note that the screws that hold this piece on are different from any of the other screws on the bumper. They are flat on top and fit flush and that's so it doesn't scrape up against the bottom of your fender when you're sliding the bumper on and off of the car. The turn signal lamp retainers or brackets on the inside of the bumper here, they are not meant to be swapped from one side to the other. They only work on the side they were meant for so I'm just including some footage so you have something to look at when you're trying to figure out which side they go back on. I highly recommend removing these if you're going to be painting not just for the looks of things but the solvent exposure to that hard plastic can shorten the life of it and make it brittle. I also recommend if you're painting to go ahead and remove some material from around the edge of the hole 
where the turn signal lamps install. This will make it easier to remove and install the lamps later on. Also prevent scratching your fresh paint when you install them. Speaking of which, when you're installing tightly fitting freshly painted parts like these fog light covers, you want to use some kind of lubricant to help snap it into place without scratching the paint. Foaming glass cleaner works fine. For this project I used Chemical Guys VRP, which is a great rubber and plastic conditioner and it's super slick and got those fog light covers snapped in no problem. Before we install the bumper I want to talk about these bolts that go up into the fender brackets. Those things should be pointing straight down and be nice and level. It's very common for them to be bent out of shape if the fender took a bump or if the bumper took a bump uh, they can bend out of shape. That's a pretty flimsy bracket that they're bolting into so make sure they're nice and straight. I don't recommend you try and remove these unless you absolutely have to. If you do, you need to know that they are a number three Phillips. If you use a number two, you're probably going to strip them out. These are usually rusted up pretty good. I would use some penetrating oil from the top side, try to get to the threads before you attempt to start taking them out. If you're removing the fender for some reason, you're more likely to have success by removing the 10 millimeter bolts from inside of the apron area. That would be the best way just to remove the fender bracket with the fender assembly. The driver's side is easy enough to get to simply by removing the coolant overflow jug right here. Over on the passenger side, you may have to remove your factory air box. I have this sweet cold air intake and so I don't have to remove anything. That 10 millimeter bolt is easily accessible right there inside of the apron. When it's time to slide your bumper back on, I definitely recommend getting some help because you do have to get the slides started before the bumper will hook back on to the bumper stays and it's impossible to see both sides at the same time. So get the slides started first and then you should be able to lift up and hook on the rebar to the bumper stays and the bumper will support itself at that point. Then you can get some tools ready. I use a magnetic socket and just by hand make sure I am threading that bolt right where it needs to be. You really don't want to cross thread this bolt. Even when the bolt is threaded in the bumper still may sag slightly and you may have to keep the bumper supported upwards as you fully tighten the bolt to make sure it stays in the proper position. After installing this bumper the driver's side looked absolutely perfect but I wasn't quite satisfied with the way the passenger side was. The fender was slightly overhanging and it looked like the bumper just needed to slide forward maybe two or three millimeters to make it a little bit better. So I uninstalled the bumper and adjusted those bolts and it looked a lot better. So we've made our final adjustments to the bumper. This side looked pretty close to perfect before. We've got us a nice even gap under that headlight. On this side, this is the one that gave us the most trouble, and it's still not absolutely perfect, but it's better than it was a little bit ago. I'm a lot more flush here. I've still got a little bit. Maybe I can work on that fender a little bit. But I also did quite a bit of sanding down to plastic on the bumper. It may be a problem with the bumper itself, too much material removed right through here so I'm not gonna chase it but all I had to do to get this bumper to come forward a little bit because this was sticking back maybe an eighth of an inch to where it wasn't perfectly flush right there and it wasn't nice and flush with the bottom of the headlight right here like it is now was my trick where I used those new bolts Instead of using the plastic clips, I just had my buddy kind of hold the middle of the rebar with the bolts loose. This side completely removed so I could pull this bumper back far enough to get to those Torx heads of those bolts. Loosen them up a little bit. Slide the bumper forward in relation to the rebar and then tighten them back up. And it worked great to adjust this front, front bumper fitment and I'm satisfied with it for now. So next I'm going to give you some information on just hardware and clips that you can source to uh, put your car back together. V3 
these two clips up front here, the 19246 and 19233, are pretty common all over the car. As for under the rockers, uh, what originally held the top of the bumper to that upper bumper support, as well as on the rear bumper, uh, these are kind of a larger hole. You've got one that's longer, one that's a little shorter. Uh, the 233 is the one that's shorter just depends on the depth that you need to clip into. Um, these work great on a lot of newer Hondas and Acuras as well. If your hole is slightly narrower, that 20247 works as well. There's also another clip I found that's closer to what the OEM style was that actually has the little Phillips head screw type in the middle. The part number on that one is 19315. These were mostly useful for the fender liner. All of these clips can be sourced from alveco.com. You really want to make sure your fender liners are secured tightly and the clips aren't loose. If your fender liners come loose, they'll get chewed up by the tires and they're getting very hard to find in good shape. This is what the hardware should look like that secures the front edge of the fender liner to the bumper, as well as what secures the lower bumper lip to the main part of the bumper. You will need seven sets of these for the lower lip, and then two more sets for each side for the fender liners. So a total of 11. You definitely want to try and use these deep shouldered bolts. The reason I say so is because they bottom out onto the U-nut itself without mashing the plastic. The more you sandwich out that plastic, the more likely it is to tear later on. If you're looking for mudguard screws that are as close to the OEM size as you can find, Alveco part number 20259 is the best match I can find. They are extremely close, almost a perfect match to the OEM mudguard kit. The last component I'm going to cover in this video is the under engine cover. It is secured with a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. The main thing you want to know is the lower portion of this cover is secured with a different bolt than what holds it up near the frame rails at the top. You want to use the bolt that has the longer set of threads to go in the lower portion of it because that's threading into an aluminum subframe on your car and the more threads the merrier when it comes to aluminum. The bolts that look like the ones that go to the fender liners with the shorter threads and a deeper shoulder on them are the ones that go up top into the frame rail. You want to make sure this cover is secured. These covers are getting harder and harder to find in good shape just like the fender liners so you don't want it flopping around and beating itself up. I will be making more legend specific videos in the future. If you found this video informative, show your support by clicking that subscribe button. I am not asking for donations and I am not promoting or trying to sell any products in my videos. I am however investing in better video and audio equipment all the time to make the videos better, so your support would be greatly appreciated. I am also open to suggestions on what videos you would like to see. Please let me know in the comments what things you would like to see on the channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep the legend alive.